Okay, so good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Okay. Okay, so in the last session, we have seen about the basic concepts about this unit two, all right, in which we saw different, different things. So let us quickly revise it, what we have seen up till now. So we started with the basic concept of the semiconductor, and that was, first of all, it was about the properties of the semiconductor, all right? Then the next one was the types of the semiconductor in which we have gone through the basic types elemental and compound, then direct and indirect band gap semiconductors. Also, we saw about intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Furthermore, we saw the classification of the extrinsic in the term of P type and N type semiconductor. Okay, so the basic properties were covered. Okay, that was in the last session, high resistivity, negative temperature coefficient. All right, then the basic classification, we saw the types also. Any doubts up till here? We saw the basic difference between intrinsic and extrinsic, as well as P-type and N-type semiconductors, right? So we have gone through everything. Any doubt till here, then you may ask. Okay, things are clear from your side. Okay, so moving ahead, the next concept is about the carrier generation and recombination. There is one more topic in between this regarding the equilibrium characteristics, right? So that will be covered at the last because that point is not in the continuity with this. Career generation and recombination is in the continuity with the previous topic. So we will cover this first to link up the unit. Okay, so we are starting with the concept of career generation and recombination in which we will go through two phenomena. Then those are phonon transition known as shockley red hole combination and photon transition, which is one kind of optical generation or recombination. Also, we will go through its applications. So let us start with the concept with the career generation. So what is actually the career generation? You can see in the definition, it's a process where electron and hole pairs are created by exciting an electron from the valence band to the conduction band and thereby creating a hole in the valence band. Means which kind of procedure it is, you can see here, suppose this is the valence band and this is the conduction band, okay, for any semiconductor material. Now electrons will be initially somewhere here in the valence band, right? So it is possible that when the electrical field will be applied at that time, its energy will be getting increased. So when the highly energized electron will be there, that will jump to the conduction band, okay? So suppose this electron is jumping here, you can see, suppose this electron is jumping at this place. So what will happen here? The place which it is vacating will be now a hole, okay? So here we are actually generating one more carrier because we know holes are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. So with one electron, we are generating one more carrier that is positively charged. So that is the process of career generation, okay? Where electron hole pairs are created by exciting an electron from the valence band to its conduction band, okay? And thereby the hole is created in the valence from which the position it's going to the conduction band. Now the second concept is regarding the recombination. So it's a reverse process where electrons and holes from the conduction and valence band respectively recombine and are annihilated, means they are destroyed. What they are trying to say is, suppose now the electron has reached to its conduction band, okay? From here it has gone there, here the hole were created, right? It may be possible that more than one electron can jump to the conduction band. Now, when the energy loss will be there, that can be due to the collision or if, if the electrical field is getting lowered, okay? Initially, suppose it's five voltage, but now it's getting three, then also their energy will be getting decreased. At that case, what will happen? The electron, which is now at conduction band, will be returning to the valence band, okay? So that's why, that's why one hole will be created in the conduction band now. Okay, because the electron is coming from here to there, right? And the hole which was initially created will now get filled. 
okay so you can see the hole that was created due to the electron jumping from valence to conduction is now getting filled from the electron getting back from the conduction to valence so you can say this electron and hole pair is now destroyed why because the electron is filled in its original position once again okay so that's why it's a reverse process where electrons and holes from the conduction and valence band respectively recombine and are annihilated so one doubt is there what is mobility in terms of the electron flow see when we are talking about mobility that means drift velocity upon the unit electrical field okay so whatever electrical field is applied on the material that will generate the electrons to drift okay which will there will be a momentum in which the drift velocity will be there so mobility means drift velocity upon the electrical field which shows that how fast the free electron can move upon applying this electrical field all right rule number 1 is it clear that is mobility in terms of the electron flow okay now let us see about the energy difference which is they are showing that initial and final stage of an electron is given as phonon or photons okay so many processes lead to this characteristics fine so we will talk about this recombination and carrier generation now so let us see this concept in depth is your doubt clear rule number 1 the mobility concept was in the unit 1 and this is unit 2 going in which the further concepts will be there clear from your side okay so now the next thing that is the first type of this carrier generation and recombination phenomena you can see that so many processes can lead to this characteristics of recombination and carrier generation so in quick summary we can say when the electron is jumping from valence to conduction at that time the hole is created at valence that is carrier generation but when we are talking about recombination a reverse process the electron is coming back from conduction to valence so the hole that was initially created is now filled and one new hole is created in this band okay where some other electron can also go right so that is the procedure for the recombination now let us see what is phonon photon transition which is known as the optical generation or recombination concept okay so photon transition when we are talking about it is one kind of direct band to band transition okay so here an electron from the conduction band actually falls back to the valence band and releases the excessive energy in the form of a photon okay and the reverse procedure is where the generation of electron hole pair is triggered by sufficiently energetic photons which transfers its energy to valence band so what is this concept trying to tell us first of all it is direct band to band transition which means that you can see in the figure here suppose one electron was there in the recombination you can see suppose electron is there in the conduction band now it is coming back to the valence band okay so the excessive energy in the direct band gap semiconductor we observed that gets emitted right so this energy here in the recombination is in terms of h into neutrino okay that h is the planck's constant and nu is the frequency of the emitted photon and same with the reverse concept what is happening in the carrier generation in the photon transition here the electron is going from here to there right so one hole will be created you can see here that is the concept about the carrier generation okay so the basic things regarding optical generation and recombination is showing that whenever there will be a recombination normally the energy will be in the terms of the heat as well okay but here they are saying that the photon is generated when the carrier generation is there all right so that is the concept about the photon and the transition you have already gone through this direct band to band transition also one kind of direct band gap semiconductors property okay so in the optical generation or recombination the basic phenomena is just getting explained here okay here what they are trying to show they are showing that the electron hole pair is now getting eliminated why because the electron has came back here so the hole which was initially created now it has been cancelled right so that is the concept about just a photon transition optical generation and recombination now the next concept in here they are saying that in case of excess carrier concentration the carrier recombination dominates and the lower carrier concentration carrier generation dominates means suppose there are less electrons in a material that can travel from the valence to conduction at that time first of all carrier generation will be there 
and when there will be too many carrier concentration means so many holes and electrons will be there at that time carrier recombination will be there okay means the electron will start moving from the conduction to valence in the recombination and in the generation they will start moving from valence to conduction so that depends upon how many carrier concentration is present in the material now what are the applications of this so first of all they have said that absorption is on active process in the photodiodes solar cells other semiconductors photodetectors whereas photon emission is the principal okay photon emission in the sense when the excessive energy is emitted that is in terms of a photon okay so whenever there will be a requirement of this optical energy at that time this thing will be utilized okay so that is the concept about the photon transition because it generates the photon photon is one kind of light energy so they have said it optical generation okay so that is the concept about this photon transition the next concept is about the phonon transition okay what is phonon here they will be saying a phonon will be the conceptual thing regarding electrical as well as the excessive energy of the electrons here okay so there is a minor difference here phonon as we have seen that what was that a mechanical energy right that was regarding the vibrations okay so in the material it will be combination of electrons potential energy plus it will be the combination of kinetical energy as well as okay so that's why the phonon will be causing so many vibrations in the material so here the heat energy is normally there due to the thermal property okay so basically phonon means here not only the optical properties are that but the thermal kinetic and electrons potential is combined so there is one model here shockley red hall okay this srh has been asked in the examination in the 7 marks so basically four phenomena will be there you can see here okay so let us see this model in the detail it is one of the easiest concept to understand only you have to remember this four types that what they are trying to say so first of all it is one kind of indirect recombination whenever you are dealing with direct and indirect always remember here the concept of the radiation as well as heat will be always followed in the direct what we saw in the direct band gap semiconductor that photon was getting emission okay the photon was getting one emission in the material when we were talking about indirect the heat energy was getting dissipated right in indirect band gap and direct band gap same thing when we are talking about the indirect model here same thing will be happening where the thermal energy is in term of the phonon now with the vibrations okay because initially the vibration can be only there in the material when there will be the thermal conductivity capacity in the material all right so here they have said that the process is trap assisted and passing through a lattice defect first of all what is trap here this is one of the important keyword that has been asked in the examination also normally what happens in a structure suppose this is a 3d structure of a crystal lattice there will be some defects also okay where the material is not properly arranged or we can say the atom molecules are not stable or we can say that atom molecules are broken or they have been interacting with another crystal or something at that time there will be defects in the material cracks can be there leakages can be there or we can say some surrounding effects on the material can be there so the basic atomic structure of the material gets disrupted okay it gets disturbed in such a position that there will be some defect in the material that defect will also have some energy okay and that is known as the trap energy band the trap energy band is only present in the material by foreign atom or the structural defect okay if another material is present or any defect in the material is there then this trap can be caused so what is trap basically in the material a defect is there that can be due to any another substance interaction or by the structural defect that is one kind of trap and due to this trap the electrons energy in this trap means in the defect portion will be different than the rest of the electrons okay and that will be known as the trap energy band you can see here et okay so basically three energy bands will be here one conduction one valence we are aware about the fermi level also and this is the trap energy band why because there is a defect and this defected electrons will actually have different energy okay so in the shockley red hall mechanism they are trying to say that the process is trap assisted passing through a lattice defect at energy level et within the semiconductor band gap okay that is just the basic about this now let us see this in detail four phenomena are there in this srh effect okay first one is electron capture 
second one is hole capture third one is hole emission fourth one is electron emission so let us see that what is actually the electron capture an electron from the conduction band is captured by an empty tramp in empty tramp in the band gap this excess energy ec minus et is transferred to the crystal lattice means now what they are saying suppose the electron is there in the conduction band okay so there will be a case when there will be low the energy due to we can say the electrons collisions or another materials presence or another interaction so when the loss of energy will be there actually the electron is trapped in this trap band its energy is present in this okay so the excess energy what will be the excess energy it was present at ec now it is getting to this level et so that is the trap energy so the energy difference between these two will be ec minus et right and that will be transferred to the crystal lattice because there will be in the form of thermal energy right so in the electron capture what is happening from the higher energy conduction band electron is trying to come back to the valence but it is trapped in the defects of the energy band okay so that's why it's present in this all right and this energy is the excessive energy ec minus et all right so that is getting emitted and that is given to the crystal lattice so that is the concept about this electron capture you can see here okay that is the electron capture they have shown various various points here all right when electron is coming back from here the trap band they have shown shown with this point fine all right so that is the concept about this electron capture now what is the hole capture so the trapped electron moves to the valence band and neutralizes a hole so a phonon with energy et minus ev is generated so hole capture is the second concept now first of all suppose the electron has came back here okay it has been already done with the electron capture now the electron from the trap because initially it wanted to get back to the valence band will actually try to go back right so here what will be the excessive energy excessive energy will be et minus ev because this is at higher level this is at lower level okay initially what we saw the electrons were directly jumping from the conduction to valence but due to this defect in the material now they were trapped here and after the trapped position they are coming back to the valence band in this path so that is the hole capture because when the electron will be coming from here to here one hole will be there right and the hole which was initially created when the electron jumped there will actually be getting filled in the valence band right so that is the concept about the hole capture and neutralization here the energy difference is always from the higher to lower so the phonon with this energy is getting emitted you can see here in this concept okay when the electron is coming from here to there at that time it will be the concept about this hole capture okay so the first one was this the fourth one second one is this now we will be focusing on the third one that is hole emission so what is hole emission electron from the valence band is trapped and leaving a hole in the valence band means you can see this concept now the electron is in the valence band and it's going trying to go to the conduction band but due to its effective we can say the trapped band energy it has been stuck in the trap band why because there was a defect in the material and the energy got varied right so that's why it actually got trapped here so whenever it will be trapped one hole will be created here from where it's moving right so an electron from valence band is trapped leaving a hole in the valence band as electron has jumped here one hole is created here okay so that concept they have shown it here you can see here that is the concept about the hole emission okay you can see actually show various points here this pt and t and everything they are showing the positive charge and the negative charge as well as okay so that is the concept about this hole emission and here what will be the energy difference it will be et minus ev will be required why it will be requiring this because actually it's going from lower to higher so for that energy gain is necessary if it was coming back then this energy was getting emitted but now it wants to go on the higher level so the energy is required here okay that is the concept about the hole emission now the fourth one is electron emission so what is electron emission a trapped electron moves from the trap energy level to the conduction band the fourth one is 
from here to here it's going okay so you can see this concept here okay the electron is actually jumping from this trapped level to conduction level so here what will be the energy required to the electron that will be ec minus et okay it will be gained in the electron then only it can move here okay so that is the concept about the emission so one simplest trick to remember this is whenever the emission is there the electron is going upwards you can see electron and hole and whenever the capture is there the electron is going downwards you can see from higher to lower all right so that will be easiest to remember this concept all right and you can show this two figures as well as that is the shockley red hole mechanism easiest concept right so basically for more thing is here that when electron capture rate is proportional to the electron concentration in conduction band okay if we are talking about the capture rate what was the capture as we have seen it's going from higher to lower okay this one at that time the electron concentration in the conduction band will be considered if it is more capture rate will be more and when we are talking about the hole capture rate that is proportional to hole concentration okay so if the holes are more definitely their capture rate will be more and their emission rates are actually proportional to the concentration of empty traps and field traps means whenever the electrons are actually trying to go up what will be required whatever the defect energy is there that will be considered first right so that's why how many trap bands are empty how many trap bands are filled that is taken into the consideration when we are talking about this concentration for the emission rates okay so that is the basic concept regarding this now let us see what are the applications here actually phonon transition is one kind of unwanted process okay because it is non radiative what happens in the radiative we are getting the optical in the radiative okay but when we are talking about this phonon transition in shockley red hole actually the thermal energy is getting emitted right so excessive heat is also not required that's why it's one kind of unwanted process okay so lowering the light generation efficiency and increasing heat losses is more in this mechanism but why we need to understand that because how the electrons are behaving in different different situation that is necessary to understand so always remember photon transition is direct band kind of transition in which radiation is there optical property is there photon is getting emitted that's why it's useful but when we are talking about the phonon transition at that time due to the heat energy is emission this is unwanted process all right so are we clear with this any doubts in these two concepts then please do mention anyone is having any doubt then please do ask okay you can unmute yourself too any doubt is there in this concept or everyone is feeling comfortable with this okay if you are not getting please make sure okay so that was the concept about this regeneration and uh, generation and the recombination okay that is the concept career generation and the recombination okay fine so can anyone say me what is actually the career generation raise your hand if you are getting the concept anyone what is actually the generation what is happening here in the career generation okay let me ask then okay 16 number dev sompura can you tell me what is actually the career generation what concept is explained yes ma'am yes ma'am career generation is the filling of holes and uh, creating carriers electron carriers okay and how it will be done from where the electron will be jumping uh when they are uh, from jumping from valence band to conduction band and uh, the temperature is uh, uh lowered and when they return to the valence band the holes mm -hmm. will be refilled and okay. career generation will be formed okay career generation will be okay very good here the valence to conduction the electrons are jumping so directly the holes are created on the higher energy good and when we are talking about the recombination yes can anyone tell me what is the recombination niket but 17 number it's a reverse process of the career generation 
Yes. Okay. Where the electrons? Then from uh, electrons are transferred from the conduction band towards the valence band. Okay. So the holes will be refilled, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Very good. So one more doubt is there. Yes, Hit, we got your answer. Explain about the trap band. Okay. So what is the trap band actually? Whenever there will be a defect in the material, that energy, that electrons which are in the defect present will be having different energy level. Okay, we can see it here. All right. Trap can be caused by presence of any foreign atom or the structural defect. All right. So what is actually happening here? Suppose there is one material and some deformity is there. It can be broken here. Also, there can be some cracks or some other material can also be present here. So whatever the electrons will be there, its energy will not be matching the conduction and the valence bands electron energy of the rest of the material. OK, so the energy band which is created due to the defect is known as this trap band energy. All right, so what happens here? Suppose the electron is trying to jump from the valence to conduction band. It will be stuck in this energy level. Why? Because there is defect in the material, okay? So that's why this capture and emission concept came into the picture. Is it clear, rule number 35? What is actually the trap? One kind of defect, structures defect, all right? So that's why it's happening, okay? Now, one more thing. Can you please explain again the electron capture? Sure. So what is happening in the electron capture? The electron from the conduction band, you can see here, is captured by an empty tram with the band gap. Means what is happening? The electron is present in the conduction band. And when there will be energy loss of the material, that can be due to the lower electrical field or that can be due to the interaction or collision with another material also. So they will actually try to return to the valence band. But what is happening here? Because that energy is getting lower slowly, there will be one uh, trap band here in which that will be got stuck okay so that is electron from the conduction band is captured by this empty trap band okay that is in empty trap band it is captured so the excess is, i mean energy right now is from ec for the conduction band in et for the trap energy right so ec minus et energy is transferred to the crystal letters in the format of heat okay the excessive energy is getting emitted that is electron capture Initially, it was trying to get back to the valence from the conduction, but their energy somehow got matched with this trap band's energy on the path, right? So that, that's why it got stuck here, okay? So that is the concept about this electron capture. Is it clear, roll number 30? What is capturing? Capturing means they are coming from higher to lower, but due to the defect in the material, they are captured in between, okay? This trap band can be anywhere. It is not always in the middle position, okay? It can be anywhere. Trap energy can be here also, or it can be here also. Just model is showing it in between the valence and conduction band. All right, okay. So now moving ahead with the next topic here, that is about the diffusion and the drift current, okay? I guess the concept about this trap and everything is clear. So what is the diffusion and the drift current? Very easiest concept, okay? First of all, let's start with the drift current. All of us know what is drift, right? Suppose one material is there in which different, different electrons are there, okay? In the valence band. Now, when electrical field is applied, okay, suppose positive to negative, this is its positive, this is negative. So electrical field will be applied in this direction from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, okay? So in the material, whatever the valence electrons are there, they will be getting some higher energy. So there will be a point where they will jump out of the material, they will start flowing as a free electron or they can interact with the another molecules also. So that is the position of a material. Now what happens whenever there will be a free electron, they will try to move from the negative to the positive direction, okay? And how it happened? Due to the electrical field that was suppose five volt or six volt, the energy the free electron got that caught some momentum, okay? Initially it was stable, it was moving randomly. But due to the electrical field, it got out of the valence band, it caught some momentum and that resulted in some velocity, okay? This velocity was required for turning the electron from the negative to the positive direction because it is possible that whenever they were moving randomly, some collisions would also be there but still they will try to move in the straight direction from the negative to positive. So that's why the drift is occurring, okay? If you have gone through the movie of car racing also, the car also got drift, right? So that is one kind of drift for the electron also, in which the momentum is getting caught by the electrons, okay? So basically what is drift current? You know, due to this, whenever the charge carriers are moving, the current will be generated. 
that is one type of drift current so we will see in the basic that the flow of charge carriers which is due to the applied voltage or electrical field is called the drift current you can see here in the figure the electrons direction has been shown from the negative to positive now whenever the electron is getting direction of negative to positive suppose it's going from here to there from here to there it's moving okay from anywhere the holes the positive potential will also be start getting formed okay some of the positive potential will be formed here because whenever the electron is left the holes are created and there will be the position that due to the electrical field holes will get start moving at this direction okay because electron has to go there so there should be some place here right so whatever the holes are there they will be getting shifted towards opposite direction okay if so many things are coming from here then whatever things already present here needs to be bounced back or moved somewhere then only these things can pass right if it is in hurdle then that thing cannot got clear right so suppose these are the holes created due to the electrons movement now the electron is getting movement and they are going like this so obviously these things need to be get it to the side right so it will be going in the opposite direction so that the rest of the things can pass all right so that is the concept about the drift current the flow of charge carriers due to the applied voltage okay so here in a semiconductor electrons always try to move in a straight line towards the positive terminal because they are traveling from the negative to positive okay and due to the continuous collision with atoms change of the direction of the flow can also occur okay it may be possible that electron that was trying to move here that can also move somewhere randomly and once again it will start moving in the straight direction so the applied voltage doesn't stop the collision but the electron starts drifting okay so suppose electron was moving here and one of the materials positive ion is there and it is getting collided so once again it will be going like this and after that once again due to the electrical field it will try to move back to its original direction okay so what is happening here the drifting is happening here and what is the drifting the momentum that was caught in the electron all right due to the collision or loss of energy or free electrons collision that is known as the drift current because now the electron is also moving and the holes are also getting captured all right so that is just the basic concept about the drift current so they have shown one equation also that the average velocity of an electron or hole is due to the applied voltage or the electrical field is known as the drift velocity okay that is one kind of average velocity because of the electrical field its direction got changed all right and it was moving randomly now it's trying to move in the straight direction so also we know this equation mu is equal to v by e okay in the first unit we have seen that mobility is equal to drift velocity upon the electrical field okay so here there will be two concepts now in the semiconductor materials whenever we are talking about the mobility for the electron it will be different and for the hole it will be different why because here the free electrons are also moving in this and the holes are moving in this direction all right so that's why two mobility two drift currents will be there so the first equation they have shown about exclusive for the electron so if i'm talking about mu e that will be velocity drift velocity of electron upon the electrical field so same equation i can write it as mu e into e also all right that is they have written same thing for the velocity of holes i can write it like this all right now they have written j e is equal to this equation so how it has occurred we know the concept j is equal to n into e into vd that equation is known by everyone all right so what is happening here the n is here the number of electron okay e is electrons charge that is steady now instead of the vd when i am talking about the density of the electron i have to take an into consideration the velocity of the electron all right so this velocity of electron can be obtained from this equation all right so they have returned j e is equal to n e into e into this is mu e into e okay that is the equation in the textbook of 2019 edition there is a printing mistake okay where this e is missing all right so just mention that also that is the drift current density due to the free electrons so same way when we are talking about the hole it will be n into e into vh right so i can write it like number of holes into electrons charge as it is into according to the vh what i am having is mu h into e here the charge and the electrical field is constant the mobility and the number of holes number of electrons get changed all right so that is the concept about this drift current density due to holes now if i want to calculate the total drift current density that will be the summation of this two 
okay so what i'm just summing up is that these things are common now electronic charge is common okay here i am having this e that is also common and here i am having this number of electrons okay that is also common here see whenever i will be talking about this holes here the concepts of the holes will also be changed but they are considering at regarding whichever electrons are there and those are the whole number of holes right what what is happening whatever electron is moving that will be creating holes so number of electron and holes will be equal right so that's why in the equation they have returned as e into number of h into mu of h e as e into number of e only because any will be more equal to nh here okay and that's why in the final equation they are taking this number of electrons common and mu e plus mu h is there okay so whenever initially here the number of holes were there but due to their numbers are equal because whatever electrons are leaving those are creating holes right if electron is jumping from here to here then electron is one hole is also one okay if it's coming back here then once again electron is one hole is also one so this concentration will be steady right so that's why it will be taken into consideration n is equal to nh and that's why in the final equation we are taking into common electron charge electrical field number of electrons common and mobility of electrons plus mobility of holes okay so that is the basic concept about the drift current any doubt till here anyone in the textbook also get this correction the small e is missing in the textbook okay if you guys are having books india publication 2019 edition the printing mistake is also there okay so just you may correct it you may open the unit 2 in which you will go through this on the page number let me just check it that will be given on yes on the page number 97 okay so you can correct this one in that there is a mistake regarding this all right so you may correct this on the 97 page number second edition 2019 if it is there in 2021 okay yes then also you may correct it okay fine okay so that is the number of e will be added here because they have directly shown number of electrons into this e okay but this small e is missing fine so you may correct that okay now the next concept is regarding the diffusion current okay atharva you are having network issue yes we got it noted down yes devendra the 21 addition is also having mistake you may correct it all right so in the diffusion current the next concept is there so till now till the drift current everyone is clear about what is happening how this equation got achieved okay clear simple equations mu is equal to v by e okay and the next equation is j is equal to n into e into vd okay in which we got replaced with the electrons as well as holes okay and the here the numbers are taken as equal because whatever the electrons will be there those are same as the holes here fine okay now the next concept is about the diffusion current we will just see the basics the details about that we will see in the next session so we will just see the basics first of all what is actually the diffusion so when uh, sometimes what happens suppose this is the material higher concentration of electrons can be there in one portion and lower concentration of region in which electrons are there can be like this also so there will be a difference that electrons are higher in this portion and lower in this portion so what happens here the electrons try to move from the higher region to lower region okay one kind of non uniform concentration is there it tries to become uniform like this that is the material's natural tendency so by this whatever the current gets generated because it's moving from the higher concentration region to lower concentration region that is diffusion current okay so about this we will get the examples also the details also in the next session so we are left with less than 1 minute any doubt still here in the drift current you may ask okay so we will see the diffusion current in detail in the next session that is current produced due to the motion of charge carrier from higher to lower okay and how this happen because material may have some impurities also fine so we are less than we are left with less than 1 minute any doubts up till now you may ask rest of the things we will see in the next session clear from your side yes on 14th the holiday is there and regarding 15 the things will be posted in the official group any more doubts okay fine so that was all we will continue with the next things
in the next session so chapters for the mid sem also the official post will be there in the group